Hey guys, it's Lavetta. And it's Miriam. And this is the Notorious Women Podcast, a comedy podcast about some of history's most notorious women. Yes, yes, yes. How you doing this week, my darling? I'm good. I'm like trying to figure out who the weather is and what she's trying to tell me because who the weather she's is. inconsistent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's like, I just so, side note, I got uh, a friend of mine, got me some plants um, oh, nice. a, a, from like a very she-she place where it's self-watering. Because so you're she-she. Yeah. Uh, I am pretty Duh. she-she, bougie. But yeah. mm. so it's self-watering. So when you get them, they have this this reservoir that it's, but they tell you, wait till the soil is completely dry. So I fell and I was like, ah. And it's already like the leaves are like turning yellow. And I'm like, what am mm. I doing wrong? And then I realized I didn't fill it all the way up because the pots are really, really small. But then also it did say that some leaves may fall off because it's getting acclimated to the new environment. So you're telling me that to... you are you're killing a self-watering plant. That's what I'm oh, getting from this. I deserve <laughs> it. I had a friend in college once that she went away for like a semester and I kept her cactus Oh, I killed oh, no. her cactus. Well, she came back. She's like, Lavetta, how could you kill a cactus? I was like, I'm sorry. I think I overwatered it. Like I get very like I even overwater or underwater. And like, so I'm hoping. And then last night it hit me like at midnight. I was like, oh, maybe I'm supposed to fill it up all the way. So I, I went around. And I filled it up all the way. But then also you have to be careful with what kind of water you use. So if you use tap water, yes, if you use tap water, you have to let it sit for 24 hours for any of the chlorine or anything that's in the water that the water is oh treated God. with. Because that can affect the, the flowers, uh, the plants. And so like, yeah, so I'm stressed out about that. And I'm like, I'm supposed to, plants are supposed to be soothing. And so like, uh, to I'm be going through a lot. calming down. A lot, a lot. Like, it's just, uh, yeah, I'm just ready. I need to go to sleep. I just need to go to sleep yeah. and sleep for like 12 hours a day for like the next week. And I think I'll be good. So only you are going to get further stressed out by a gift of self-watering plants. Okay. It's a problem. It's a problem. Yeah. When did I but, become this person? I blame the pandemic. Pandemic broke me. I'm just going to say. <clears throat> Listen, it broke us all though. Yeah. Okay. It broke You're in me, good but company. <laughs> Well, on that note, we should get to maybe some broken women. I don't know. I, I don't maybe, know. Maybe. Uh, I, I believe, know. Well, I know. Hmm. Let me just double check. I believe you're first this week. I don't know yes, anything. Yes, you are first this week. I'm, so okay. who is your notorious woman? Hopefully she could be an inspiration <clears throat> for me because I need it. Yes, she can. Uh, okay. okay. So do you, Ooh. have you ever heard... Um, of an artist named Linda Martell. Yes. Okay, because she's like in the zeitgeist right now because I like the word zeitgeist. It makes me sound smart. Okay. <laughs> um, it was definitely an SAT word that I've known since I've studied for my SATs. <laughs> Not an SAT Here I am word. <laughs> bragging like I'm smart. Okay. Um. So, okay, because like I'll just like, Cut to the chase if you've listened to Beyonce's new album, which thank you to the Apple Music charts. I know you have, right? Um, I'm talking to everybody in the world. Cool. Um, great. Like, listen, the newest album is, I've been baking a lot because like you love Easter your baking. and then I'm prepping Passover. It's the best like baking soundtrack. I, I know that's weird. Well, it's kind of it's cozy because it feels like a cozy yeah. album too. So it's very cozy. Come on, man. Okay, and then every so often my kids walk in the kitchen at the wrong time, but that's fine. They're fine. They'll learn. They'll learn. They will. Um. Okay. So let's talk about her, Linda Martell, born with the name Thelma Bynum on June fourth, nineteen forty one. She was one of five children. Uh, parents were Clarence and Willie May. I love a Willie May. This is a country woman. Yes. Her last name is Bynum and her parents' name, Willie May. <laughs> Willie May. <laughs> Willie May. From Leesville, South Carolina. I'm mm -hmm. from the South. We were doing Southern accents the other day and my children told me that my Southern accent was not very good. 
and I might have cried a little. Listen, I'm not, Southern. Not the babies. <laughs> the babies. Oh, but shading you. Oh, my yes. God. Not. Oh, that, that hurts yes. when the, the babies are like, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, mom, stop. Like, How dare you, you child? <laughs> You get here right now and you listen to me. And they're like, Mom, don't do stop. it. I'm telling you, always do foghorn leghorn. Works every time. Ho, ho. No, I'll say, I'll say, I'll say, I'll say. All right, I'll stop. No <laughs> okay. one wants to hear me do that. But you're funny. I'm just, I'm just awkward and sad. Um, so her father was a sharecropper and her mother worked many hours in a chicken slaughterhouse. So. Oof. Five kids, sharecropping, slaughterhousing, not easy. Now, when was she born again? 1941. And her father was still a sharecropper? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, Reparations now, y'all. Listen, because sharecropping I, is basically another form of slavery. It if is. people don't know, look it up. Yeah. Yeah. And, so, and that's the thing. The people are like, oh, well, we're past that. Are we? Because it's 1941 and her father's a sharecropper. Because wow. like, yeah, and that's hard. It's hard life. It's a really hard life. Um, So she was a little girl. She was real smart. And she was like, sharecropping does not look fun. So she learned how to cook at the age of seven. So she made dinner. Right. Yeah, the little hands. Oh, know, the little right? pretty baby cooking. Oh, good girl. She Meanwhile, probably had kids- to have a little stool to get up on the stove and like it's. It's such a different world. My kids are like, can I cook eggs by myself? Absolutely not. You'll burn oh, no. everything. <laughs> These kids nowadays would not survive in the wilderness nope. of 1940s. <laughs> no. <laughs> At all. But that's, and that's our fault. It's 100% my it's fault. It's a good thing because kids should not yep. be cooking dinner at seven, right. but it's just, yeah, these kids, ooh, these are some soft kids here. Like, <laughs> they even softer than the kids from the 90s. Listen. My husband calls them marshmallows all the time. Marshmallows. <laughs> They just it's like it's like our pets, like our pampered pets, like oh, oh yeah. yeah, you not. Yeah, don't set about don't even set in the backyard. They can't handle it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um so her father was a preacher, which inspired her earliest music, because we're gonna talk about music today. Um she sang gospel music at the church, but she was also drawn to country music. And she talks about how she actually only really knew country music and gospel music until her teens. She she didn't she was so sort of secluded from the world that that was all she knew. Yeah, those people um, um, tend to be very religious. They work really yeah. really hard, and uh, the church is also the social center. So they spend yes. a lot of their time in the cert in, in the so church. So that's their world. Why would they yeah. know anything else? Um, so she and her sister and her cousin in her teens decided to form a singing group, uh, called the Anglos. I have, I don't know why they called it that. They're probably thinking of angels. Cause again, these are very okay. religious, Southern religious people. Those are my people. I, I'm very familiar okay. with them. Yeah. I was thinking of like Anglo Saxon. No, they're you not know. thinking that. They're thinking because angels as a I reference that to was, angels. As, yeah. as an irony? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Right. I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what they're thinking. Yeah. Um, that makes perfect sense. Way yeah. more sense than the conclusion I came up with, <laughs> which makes no sense. Okay. Um, so they performed R&B music in areas around Columbia, South Carolina. And a local DJ, okay, his name was Charles Big Saul, in quotes, Green convinced her to change her name to Linda Martell. He said, "Quote: Your name is Linda Martell. You look like Linda. That fits you." End Aww. quote. And Linda right. means beautiful in Spanish. <clears throat> right, Linda. Linda. Yes. yes. Um. So in 1962, the group took an eight-hour bus ride to Muscle Shoals, Alabama. Oh. I bet you it's like. Why is it called Muscle Shoals? I'm not. I don't know. I don't know, but it's a very famous place. I tell you that yeah. much. Yeah, but like when you look at it, it written down, you're like, wait, what? Uh, okay, this mm, is, listen mm, for our people who mm. are listening. Southern people love to make up shit. We love to create <laughs> words. I live for that. I you bet know you I live for that. It's they probably said <laughs> they didn't pronounce they didn't, uh, muscles. Like, listen, we love to put words together. <laughs> we love to just. <laughs> Biggie seemed like he was Southern when he came up with conversate. It's like, no, B- Biggie, it's converse. He's like, no, I'm going to make up a new word, conversate. <laughs> That's very Southern. <laughs> okay. So. Of course, I love a conversate. So, yeah. You know. And then a lot of the names in these, uh, like, old uh, American towns are like Native American names that then the 
non-Native American uh, people, like, renamed and Americanized it, quote unquote, like, mm. so, Muscle yeah, Shoals. Yeah, that makes sense. Muscle Shoals. Yeah. So they recorded their first R&B single there. Now, the, So now they're called Linda Martell and the Anglos, and Fire Records released um, the song A Little Tear Was Falling From My Eyes that same year. Fortunately, that single was not successful. Aww. So... Meanwhile, they're also singing backup for like the Drifters and Jimmy Hughes. Um, and they're, they're also at the same time releasing other singles uh, through uh, the VJ label, such as Lonely Hours. Um, David Brown of Rolling Stone called the song, quote, simmering for lone girl group pop. Now, oh, is that good or bad? It's a little bit of both. He probably thought right. it was being um, he I, I he may have thought he was being complimentary. Um, but Maybe. back then, the girl group has like a very misogynistic kind of like Doesn't tone it to though? it. Like girl singer, girl group. Like you know, it's like you well, you need singer? the girl singer to pop because <laughs> right. you always need Lady Luck, you Hello. know, in the room. So right, you know. But duh, they're just jealous of us. Um, yeah. And this is the 60s, early 60s, right? Yeah, wow. early 60s. Wow. So they the group separated. Her cousin got married and her sister left the group. So now she's a solo artist on her own. Um, and so she's singing on a South Carolina Air Force base. She's kind of getting gigs here oh, yeah. and there. That's how it is um, back then. Like even now, yeah. like you just got to go where you got to go. In you the 80s, go. it was uh, it was malls. It was shopping malls. Yes. <laughs> no, like, it's so true. Yeah. yeah. Like you just that that's just where it is. And or that's fairgrounds just, was, or like bars, wherever you got to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. She's just like do do Air Force bases. OK. Yeah. Um, she was heard singing country songs by Nashville furniture salesman William Duke Rayner. The names in her story are amazing. We are a colorful bunch in the South. I tell you that much. No matter what color it. you are, we are a colorful bunch. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so in the North, we are tight assed. Is that what we are? No. Hey, I'm one of those people like, oh, that Southerness. I got to get to the North. I got to get with the Yankees. Uh, no, we just, I, the older I've gotten, the more I appreciate it. But when I was coming up, I was like, why we just got to make up shit? Just make up. We just make up everything in the South. Just make it up as we go. So. Yeah. We pretend to know everything in the North. (laughs) Yeah. Right? We're just like, no, that's how it is. And that's how it's always been. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm from California. (laughs) I know. It's just Which is like the West. Yeah. You know. It's all good. America's big. (laughs) America is big. And very big. Different in different areas. It really is. Yeah. The older I get, the more I realize that. Yeah. Um, Okay. So he offered to arrange a demo record. Um, but she originally declined his offer because she thought he was a, quote, kook, end quote. But he kind of hounded, like, I, you know, like he just kept pressing, was like, you're good. So she accepted his proposal and he became her manager. Now, Charlie Pride was a Ooh. black country music artist mm-hmm. who was successful. So yes. uh, Rainer was like, hey, let's have a black woman country mute who was so 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 good you know let's let me get money let her get her thing right he says quote i figured that if i could find a colored girl that could sing country and western i'd really have something he told ebony in 1970 um so i think it was less about her uh, being supported a, by him he's a and more about him making his money yeah, of course. Yeah, America. All right. It's like so, Charlie Pride successful. Let's get a, a black woman and let's see yeah. if that works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So she went to Nashville. She met producer Shelby Singleton, and he convinced her to record as a country singer. So she was, she was surprised that it was going to be full country, um, but she recorded a demo because she had been doing R and B. Yeah, and like yeah. well, and that stuff. makes more sense. Yeah, because that's also back then they still had race records, quote unquote, yeah, they where did. they separated. So anytime, basically any record a black person sang on it, no matter what the genre was, was a race record. So, yeah. Well, that's so stupid. Yeah. Sorry. 
Not sorry. It's stupid. Um, <laughs> yeah. I know it's a podcast, but if you could see Liv at his face right now. Well, and also glorious. just be, let's just be clear. Black people from the South usually love country music. <laughs> I'm just going to like, yeah. like, especially back in this day, we, I love country music and I love like old school country music and some of the newer stuff too. And, you know, more recent stuff, but yeah, I listen, we, yeah, because it's it's southern. It's southern. It's country. It's like it's it's all at roots. It's uh, blues, jazz, all of that. It has all those roots of that. And yeah, it's just a hodgepodge. But I love That's country cool. music. So listen, I will admit that I am your white girl, California. I really liked Achy Break Heart. That was me Don't with you a tear my heart. Heart. My break, break, break your heart. Your heart. That was my first moment. I was like, oh, maybe I like country music. Um, I was, I will even yeah. go way back to Patsy Cline, you know. Okay. Uh, I mean, some of course, it Dolly is just, Parton. And yes. Like, and of course, That's I mean, true. you got the Oak Ridge Boys. You got Randy Travis. You got Reba McIntyre. You got Loretta Lynn. You got like, listen, I can go on and on and on yeah. and on and on. So. You yeah. could, huh? Mm-hmm. Um, I can't because I, once again, I'm learning. All right. So let's just take a moment. She's been married twice. Let's talk about her love life. We could do that. Get a little it, bit. girl. So she was 19 when she got married to her drummer. Now, I don't know if it's her drummer, but a drummer, Clark Thompson. Um, and they had three children. Um, and then they separated in 1966 and she later remarried, um, business owner, Ted Jacobs. There's like more to that part of her life, but like, I'm not that interested. I mean, get it girl. Do you like, I support you. Mm -hmm. And Miss Linda's still around doing her thing. So, Hey, uh, yeah, let's talk about it. So May 15th, 1969, she signed a management contract with Rainer and signed with Singleton's plantation record label. The next day. Now, you heard me. This woman who was born to sharecropping parents who knows who knows deeply mm, the history of her people and what they went through signed with plantation records. White people Shh. love a plantation. They like Damn. to put it on. And a plantation ain't nothing but a work camp, y'all. It's just yeah. with a pretty fancy house on it. Like, it, they love. But it's so ubiquitous. It's just so it is. ingrained yeah. in the culture that back then, you just like, we weren't happy about it. She wasn't happy about it. But she's like, Ugh, really? Plantation? Might, um, might as well be like a uh, Sambo. <laughs> like yeah. The right? of records. Like, what? Why what? not? <laughs> like. I mean, it's and she she did say something. She did, of say, she did. you know, um, but they were like, "What are you gonna do?" And so she felt like she had no choice. Yeah, yeah. But but she was she was she was, and I gotta say, in those days, to be vocal about it, uh, you know, because they're getting a kick out of it. <laughs> yeah, Plantation <laughs> Records. I'm gonna sign me a color gal. Oh, uh, oh yeah. It hurts a lot. Yep. Um, this is why people so, don't want you to get money because you have options, you know, to put up with shit. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yep. Um, so she, they found her some songs to record. She recorded the song Color Him Father um, and 10 others. It was a another song uh, that was a pop song by the Winstons that she re-recorded as a country style. Um, and then 10 other tracks. She recorded this all in one 12 hour work session. So what I just heard, not, wow. oh, she's amazing. Cause she is amazing, but that they worked her too fucking hard. Cause they just wanted to get it done. Well, That's you know why they worked her so hard? Because it's plantation records. Yes. <laughs> I mean, fucking racist. So, like, <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Yes. Even when they're supposedly in business with you and you work with right. them, they just cannot help yeah. themselves to just like, just right. stick the knife in and turn it. Like they like just can't help themselves. You're going to make money only because of her talent and her skills and yeah. her abilities. You've done nothing but give her a studio. Yeah. Like, fucking hate this. Okay. 
but I love her. So uh, that song was her first plantation single in July 1969. It climbed to number 22 on the Billboard Hot Country songs. Um, what was the and name the of the follow- single? Okay. It was the um, Color Him Father. Okay, okay. And then the song, the follow-up song before the next Teardrop Falls reached number 33 on the Billboard Country Chart in 1970. The whole record reached 40 in the Billboard Hot Country albums. Um, so she was then hired by a booking agent, Hubert Long, and he were, he helped arrange like entertainment opportunities. Like, AKA, go guest on this show, go like... So she made television appearances on the Bill Anderson show and hee haw. Hee haw. Hee haw. Um, she made her debut on the Grand Old Opry radio broadcast um, after Rayner, her manager, played her recent record for an official at the company. Wow. Um, That's a big deal. Yes. She became, with her opera debut, she became the first black female artist to play the show and eventually performed there a total of 12 times. Wow. So. In the American South, she was marketed as, quote, first female Negro country artist, end quote, um, and was put on package shows with country artists Waylon Jennings and Hank Snow. And I know Waylon about Jennings. package. Yes. <laughs> right. Um, which I think is really good. Like she's kind of. Yeah. It. No, this is huge. Yeah. 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 Um, Huge. but fun fact, she is still black and America <laughs> is still going to America. And they always going to remind you, you're a colored gal. Yeah. They love gal. Gal is the equivalent of boy. In case you guys don't know. Yeah. It's equivalent of boy. Um, do you like that? America's still going to America. I don't know. I might, I might not keep that. <laughs> So she was taunted by white audiences. They they shout racial slurs at her while she was performing. Who raised you, motherfuckers? Who raised you? Right? Don't have yeah. nothing nice to say. Don't say it. You know. Wow. Um. So she tells Rolling Stone, "Quote: You're gonna run into hecklers, and I did. You felt pretty awful." Aww. So, as her career progressed. She says that the taunting did lessen, but it never entirely left. Um, the name calling continued to cause her professional conflict, but she still kept performing. Um, in 1970, her manager, Rayner, sued her because he believed he deserved a higher commission because this white man, okay, okay, off of her talent, yeah. Mm. If I'm wrong that he's not white, you can tell me. I'm just making assumptions here. No, he is. Yeah, thank you. Um so Singleton, the the guy who ran the, you know, the, the plantation records, cool, cool, um helped bring attention away from the lawsuit, but he also informed her that he would not be promoting her as heavily because Jeannie C. Riley P.S. White Lady uh, was selling more records than she was. So okay. is she on the same label? Is that yes? What? And okay. so he was like, "Oh, you right?" See, they just they just keep fucking with this woman, playing in her face, and like, yeah. This is this is the side of the entertainment business people don't realize who are not in the industry. Yeah, a lot. It's not talent that keeps people from succeeding. No, a lot it's of this not. is this behind the scenes shit that. Like, yeah, you're just like really, dude, really. So now I you're just that's... not going to promote it. <laughs> exactly. Like, not going to promote a, me. A, did she sell three more records because she's like new and she's white and people like her? It's fine, and no disrespect to Jeannie. Yeah, who I'm sure is very very talented, and and she is. I looked her up. She's done a lot. Um. But like, we can all play in the swimming pool, okay? Okay. Um, so she left Plantation Records. She probably felt pretty good about leaving them. Yeah. Um, and she cut several tunes with a different label. Then he, Singleton, found out and threatened to sue the company. Quote her, he blackballed me. It ruined my reputation in country music. So... After several oh. more years with very limited success, she chose to retire from Nash from the national music industry. 
These motherfuckers. Yeah. They robbed us of her talent. Yeah. You know. So she did, she spent two decades uh, singing in small clubs in different parts of the U.S., uh, California, Florida, New York City. So she, she retired held... from recording new music. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. Um, and then, so she, she held various jobs. She worked on cruise ships. She opened a record shop. In 1991, she returned to South Carolina to be closer to her children and she became a bus driver for her home region school district. So she still played with band on weekends. Um, they they went they were hired as for family reunions and weddings. Um, and you know, I mean, can you imagine this woman? You're like, this wedding is the best wedding I have ever been to ever. You know, like it's just she uh, belongs on a bigger stage. You're correct. Yeah. She this does. is why you gotta support people yeah support artists yeah. yeah um this is this is sweet i will say uh many people in her area did not know who she was but uh the principal of a high school one of the high school assemblies because remember she worked for the school district uh said of her early she said he said others study about black history we have black history right here in our own school Aww. so you know, she wasn't, I feel like she, I don't know, I'm not interviewing her, but I feel like she, she carved out a beautiful little life that she went, you know what? America is America. I'm going to live my life. Um, so in the mid 2000s, she retired from her public school career and last performed publicly in 2011 with her band Easy, E-A-Z-Z-Y. I love it. In January 2014, the Swedish TV program uh, called Jill's Veranda, which is like Jill's porch in Nashville, right, documented the search for an interview of Linda Martell. The show's hosts traveled to South Carolina to meet her, discuss her music, and why she abandoned her recording career. And they also performed with her on some of her songs. Um, she also supports... So, in 2020, after country artist Reese Palmer named her Apple Music podcast after her album, Color Me Country, people started talking about her again. Um, so she also supports the underrepresented voices of BIPOC artists in country music through the Color Me Country Artist Grant Fund. In 2021, a GoFundMe campaign was launched by her granddaughter, to create a documentary about her career and struggles as a black performer in Nashville. Now, Aww. 2024, she appears on Beyonce's Cowboy Carter, a country focused studio album that I know none of y'all have heard of until right now. <laughs> so I'm here to tell you that there's this great artist named Beyonce. You're welcome. <laughs> so, she, okay, where am I? I'm reading this. Okay, so she has a two spoken word appearance on the track Spaghetti and the Linda Martell show. On Instagram, she commented, quote, I am proud that at Beyonce is exploring her country music roots. What she is doing is beautiful and I'm honored to be a part of it. It's Beyonce after all. Oh, and she, I, and that, I mean, her story is still going. Yeah. Right. Beyonce has, uh, that's how I found her. Like if you read the notes in her, in her album, it starts with Linda Martell. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to talk about Linda Martell. <laughs> and I have a question. Uh, the GoFundMe, is it still, can we, can people I think donate so, to I it? I think so. I think so. Okay. Hopefully. Yeah. Sh- so yeah. guys, if you're listening to this, go to GoFundMe and find that campaign to donate so we can get a documentary, a well-deserved yeah. documentary on her, on her life. I'm going to throw out there that Beyonce might, um, might want to produce it. Because I, mean, I know Beyonce and I are like best friends. Yeah. So. Only know. in your head, not in her head, but in your head. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Beyonce and Taylor Swift and I have lunch all the time. <laughs> all the time. Best friends. Yep. Yep. Best friends. That's um, wonderful. And that, that is her. I mean, she was 
one of the first, the country music's first black artist to have commercial success. And like, is, yeah. That, I mean, she, as much as she like kind of hit it and then had to fade because of the resistance and the closed horrible. doors and, yep. And she still fought through it. And I have to say, I think about this a lot. We get, we give so much credit for people getting through, you know, fighting through the oppression, fighting, fighting past it, being heckled and continuing on. Can we just stop the heckling? Like, can we just, can we just stop normalizing that as like, I mean, yes, I give her all the credit, but I don't want to have to give her all that credit. I'd rather that she was able to have the career she truly deserved. And I think people don't understand, like with black artists here in America, um, they often, can you imagine performing for a hostile crowd? No. But and it's I've, like... You and I have performed on in front of yeah. people. And the crowd, and it affects your performance. It like, does. Like if the energy, because you can feel the energy. Like, yeah. Whether you, you just feel it because that's, you know, human beings, we're connected to each other and we communicate non-verbally mostly. Um, and just doing that and thinking oh there's going to be resistance but you know push through and then just behind the scenes not having the support from your right. management mm -hmm. and your record company who are basically because he basically was like well we're not gonna promote you and that's like yeah, death that's to an what artist. he said like especially back then like, yeah it's like now, oh she's doing better is she or we're just like hopping on her train we yeah. think we might do or it's better. like we tried to call it gal and it didn't work out so we just gonna drop her basically yeah like yeah. And, and so then we're going to sue her because she's doing better doing something else with someone. Yeah, else. the audacity to then sue her when she's like, well, if you're not going to support me, let me go and find somebody who will. Yeah. And like, yeah. It's like, okay, fine, bye. It's like the enemy, the call is coming from inside the house, inside yeah. the camp, and there not you go. outside. So, but thank you so much for sharing that, Linda you're Martell. Welcome. I love her. Yes. Um, All right. Who, who do you have? I'm scared. You, you devil, <laughs> you read my mind um, yeah. because my notorious woman this week yes. is Beyonce. 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 Stop. <laughs> it has to be Beyonce. It Beyonce. has to be Beyonce. I did read your mind. I might have also read the entire world's mind. But anyways... <laughs> Yeah, and just so you guys oh know, these women I are notorious her. in the good way, heroic, but also because oh, they yeah. dare to uh, go outside of the box of the limitations yes. that the world tries to put on uh, women, particularly black women who yeah. don't fit into a neat little box that they can dismiss. So Beyonce now, obviously Beyonce is a mega, mega star. So <laughs> Beyonce is a mega, mega star. So. Mm -hmm. Technically, there familiar. could be yeah. three parts of her life and she's still very young, but it's not. Uh, I'm going to you can look up a lot of this stuff, but I'm just going to give you guys yep. the overview. If there's anybody out there who because uh, actually I didn't know some of this stuff, actually. So some people may not know. So that's uh, you are my people, um, including Miriam. Uh, hey. So we know like maybe the big stuff, but we don't know yeah. the origins. I think a lot of people don't unless they're like you know, in the hive and they've been in the hive from the beginning, the beehive or the bay hive from the beginning. Um, so let's get started. Okay. okay. So Beyonce, just one word, <laughs> star. Do you, do you have to explain that? Do people know. not know that? Uh, yeah. You know. Uh, oh Lord. You know. Okay. <laughs> well, Beyonce was born. Beyonce Giselle Knowles on September 4th, 1981 in Houston, Texas to Matthew Knowles, a Xerox sales manager turned music entrepreneur, and mm. Celestine Ann Beyonce, uh, a.k.a. Tina Knowles, a hairdresser oh, and salon owner. I did not know her mother's name is Celestine Ann. That is so country. That is very I love southern. it. Um, I thought it was Tina. Tina is her, I guess her nickname is probably what the family calls her, but she was born Celestine Ann, so beautiful um and side note so beyonce um is her mother is the first name beyonce's first name is her mother's last name right maiden last name but actually yes. her mother's 
actual maiden last name is Beyonce. <clears throat> oh. Excuse me, B E Y I N C E. But when she was born, there was a spelling error because it's oh. the fucking South. Yeah. And they gave her the last name of Beyonce. But actually, wow. Her, Beyonce's maternal line is actually Beyonce. So we should be calling her Beyonce. Yes. But, okay, Beyonce. So I think that's just, I love how black people innovate. So her mother's like, her mother, that. and so that is why Miss Tina's last name is different from her relatives. So okay. when you go and look at her relatives, they all have Beyonce. Oh. But it's actually Beyonce is the actual last name, maiden last name. So I think it's so great that she gave their firstborn, Beyonce, because she's the oldest of two. Yes. Um, her maiden, uh, her, her maiden name as her firstborn's first name, which I think is I very beautiful. Oh. Um, and Beyonce is one of two. She's the oldest of two girls. Solange Knowles is her younger sister, who's also a very successful recording artist. And yes. um, we call her like a black girl joy poster child. She's like a flower child. Uh, get into Solange. So because Solange ain't no joke. So I will say this. Like if I had a choice between being Beyonce or Solange, I would be Solange. I would be Solange. Yeah. All absolutely. eyes are not on me, but I'm still doing my thing. You know, Solange is living her best life. Yeah, okay, exactly. <laughs> Don't and cry like, for not, Solange. Okay? No, I'm not. Yes. I'm not. I'd like so, to have lunch with her. <laughs> yes. Uh, now, as a child, um, Beyonce went to St. Mary's Catholic Mon- Montessori. Montessori school in Houston because on her mother's side they're Catholic on her father's okay. side they're Methodist so okay. Protestant and then Catholic um, and and she enrolled in dance classes there her singing ability was discovered uh, when dance instructor uh, dance instructor Darlette Johnson began humming a song and Beyonce finished it able to hit the high pitched notes damn girl so you can't you teach like, that teaching these little kids and then you start singing and then the kids like "Ah," you're like oh my god what Mm. so it's like and people love that and i as as a southern uh black girl who was grew up a little cute black girl in the south um i will tell you in the black community when they discover a child has a gift they're very excited and they're very supportive usually so they're like we got to get this this baby somewhere she got to be singing (laughs) like You know, so um, after that, Beyonce started performing in various singing and dancing competitions. Now, when she was eight, she met Latavia Robertson um, at an audition for an all girl entertainment group. So basically she was trying to get into a kid's group. She's eight. Right. Uh, They were placed in a group. I know. Eight years old. They were placed in a group called Girl Girls Time, T-Y-M-E, with three other girls. And... um, in the group, they rapped and sang and danced um, uh, at various shows, basically on the talent show circuit in Houston. So around okay. town, Get these cute little girls. Can you imagine? Oh, my God. Yeah, so cute. Oh, my God. Um, and this would be like 1989. So cute. Okay. Um, so in the fall of 1990, she enrolled in Parker Elementary School, a music magnet school in Houston, okay. where she performed with the choir she uh, went on to attend the high school for the performing and visual arts and later a leaf Elsick high school. I didn't even know that. I didn't know she was in performing arts high school, but that makes I sense. I didn't either. Uh, she was also a member of the choir at St. John's United Methodist church, probably her family's church where she sang her first solo and was the soloist for two years. Oh, so, uh, so she's surprising. Singing. Why am I like, Oh, like, yeah, that voice is the soloist for at least two years. Yeah. Obviously. So she's she's working. She's singing at school. She's singing in church. She's just singing. And by all accounts, all of her friends, all of her family members would tell you that even at that young age, Beyonce was incredibly ambitious, like yeah. incredibly, incredibly, incredibly ambitious and love working and love working and singing and all at like eight, nine years old. Right. I, yeah. So. Now, throughout this time, she and Latavia and the other girls uh, continued to sing in their group uh, that eventually included her, quote, play sister, Kelly Rowland, um, who began living with uh, the Knowles family uh, at some point. Um, oh. during this kind of hazy. Uh, basically, in the South, we call what we call a play cousin, play play sister basically it's a family friend maybe if they're going okay. through some stuff uh family members will take families will take in the children okay. 
Yeah. Um, and I believe that uh, Kelly's mom, who was then a single mom, uh, because the father had been abusive and just basically Oof. abandoned them, okay. um, she was struggling. So she needed help with her babies and the nose stepped in and they um, it probably started off like Kelly was just staying there a little bit. And then she just sort of moved in with them and they okay. um, she became their third daughter, basically. Oh. Um, so Beyonce, Latavia, Kelly and another girl named T- Tamar Davi uh, okay. and another girl all were in this group girls time. So okay. they're performing. Um, and then after one of their performances, R&B producer Ann, uh, no, Arne Fragger brought them to his Northern California studio and placed them Ooh. on Star Search. <gasps> God, I just I just became nine years old right now. <laughs> Star Search at I the time. I, 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 yeah. I must have seen them. Go to you. Go to YouTube. You can find. I it. will do that now. Not right now. They were the largest. Uh, Star Search was the largest talent show on national television at the time. Yes. Now, Girls Time. They didn't win, uh, oh. and they were distraught. They were very little. Uh, they were very oh. young. And Beyonce later said that the song they performed was just not a good song. So oh. they were, but they were devastated. The way only kids oh. can be devastated. Yes. Okay. Oh, oh my like, heart. Like it's just. Yeah. Now, in 1995, Beyonce's father, Matthew, believing that um, with the right management, the girls could really go far. So he really started to believe in them. And by all accounts, he also saw how driven they were and they were very disciplined. OK, um, yeah. So he resigned from his job to manage the group. So he had this like high Dang. paying job with Xerox. It was a good job, as we say in yeah. the South. Um, so he, he dropped a few of the girls, including T- Tamar, um, and he Poor added, Tamar. I know, uh, it could have been that, you know, she was a kid. Maybe she just didn't yeah. have, I, I, who knows? She um, wanted to play soccer also, you know? Yeah, it <laughs> like, could be. Yeah. Knows? Maybe yeah. she uh, had other interests. Uh, and then he added Latoya Luckett. Um, okay. and so basically the group became a quartet with, uh, Latavia, Beyonce, Kelly and Latoya. Okay. Okay, so now the move reduced the family's income by half. Yeah. And so Beyonce's parents were forced to sell their house and cars and move into apartments. Dang, these are steps I would not take. But I'm wrong because Beyonce, right? Well, it caused a lot of strain in the relationship because you can imagine Miss Tina, who's a business owner. She has her own salon is like, what, yeah. the, what the hell are you doing? And then you lose half of the income. Mm, um, yeah. So but Matthew had a vision, you know, he was uh, I know Beyonce didn't like that, um, that uh, comparison with Joe Jackson, because Joe Jackson famously is believed to have been um, borderline abusive with the kids. Not uh, the nicest. But, but I yeah. also think that people, Joe Jackson, people don't understand that Joe Jackson was he had a wife and what, six kids? Seven kids, six or seven living in a seven. small two bedroom apartment and with no prospects. So Joe was doing a lot of it also out of like, uh, I think Neat. famously Joe Jackson saw the um, um, uh, the Osmonds and was like, my kids could do that. It was like, well, let's do it. So and he had <laughs> he, he was incredibly. Right. I mean, yeah. it wouldn't have worked if he didn't have incredibly right gifted children. So I think Matthew uh, similarly saw that his uh, children and this group was really, really talented and they really need the right management. Cause as you, as we can see yeah. from your story about yeah. Linda Martell, if you don't have the right management and backing, it'll go nowhere. Right. So right. he probably was sitting on the sidelines was like, I can do better than this. So, so he basically made a commitment um, to getting them where they needed to go. So uh, as a foursome, the group continued to, pr- to perform uh, around town and as opening acts for other established, more established R&B girl groups. Okay. Um, and this helped them to get more notoriety and also in this new iteration, because again, now it's a right. quartet. Um, the girls uh, auditioned for record labels and were finally signed to Electra Records. Okay. Um, and then they moved to Atlanta Records briefly to work on their first recording, only to be cut by the company. <gasps> yep, that happens. <sighs> that, I mean, Leisha Keys has a very famous story of like she had another album. And then like what happens is there's like a, a, sh- uh, a shuffle of executives. So yes. the executive leaves, then the yep. new executive just 
cuts or like puts on the shelf the projects yep. that the previous exec. So it, it's, it's just a lot that goes into becoming successful. Yeah. Um, now this put further strain on the family because imagine yeah. they get signed. So Miss Tina's probably thinking, OK, finally, we'll see some money. Right. Who knows whatever what other stuff is going on in their marriage? Who knows? But they her parents separated. I didn't know this. Yeah. I I did not know this. So wow. they officially separated. Now on October 5th, 1995, Dwayne Wiggins Grassroots Entertainment signed the group. Um, and in 1996, the girls began recording their debut album under an agreement with Sony Music. Okay. After this happened, the Knowles family reunited. Uh, and shortly after, the group uh, got a contract with Columbia Records. Now All we're right. cooking. Right. All right. So this is 96. So Beyonce so are is they, what? Are they back together? They're back together. Okay, good. I was worried about that. Okay. Even yeah. I- so Beyonce is 15. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. She is a child. Her parents have separated. And I think all the girls are around the same age. I think they're all like probably 14, 15, 16. They're all around the same age. They're very young. That's really intense. But they got signed to Columbia Records. Columbia Records is a big deal. You know, Um, so they continue to perform as they're working on their new music uh, as opening acts uh, as an opening act for, again, other more established groups like SWV, Drew Hill and Immature. Um, And it's so funny. Recently, um, SWV had a thing with Escape and, you know, like a a reality show. And they were saying uh, Coco and and, uh, Taj from SWV uh, were saying that they remember performing in Houston and how Beyonce and Kelly would come up to her, come up to them and be like, Oh my God, we love you so much. And like Uh how they were just such cute young girls and like they could, they were talented, but like just how like they remember them being like meeting these 14 and 15 year olds. Yeah. Yeah. Now um, in 1996, uh, they changed their name to destiny child, destiny's child. And it's based upon the passage in the book of Isaiah. Okay. So in 1997, Destiny's yeah. Child released their ma- uh, released their major label debut uh, song called Killing Time on the soundtrack, uh, the 1997 uh, soundtrack for Men in Black. Okay. Okay. In November, the group of, of that year, the group released their debut single and first major hit, No, No, No. No. Um, okay. Yes. Now I remember this first one that came yes. out. I didn't like the song. I was just like, cause it was kind of slow. It didn't it. really pop until Wyclef Jean from the Fugees did a remix. And it was much more like it had that, 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 uh, Wyclef. Oh, like, maybe flavor. that's the version I'm remembering. <laughs> yeah. And that's the one that really like yeah. popped. It like really, really yeah. popped. Yeah. Um, in February 1998, so the following year, they uh, the group established were established as a viable act in the music industry because off of the success of that, you right. know, because it was on the charts for a while and then it take a while and then that remix came and that's when I I think they got on most of our radar. Yes. Um, and uh, the so that year they released the writings on the wall. Uh, actually, the following year in 1999, and okay. that became a multi-platinum uh, selling record. And that was their second album. Oh, that was their second album. Okay. That was their second. The writings on the wall, because, again, they've been struggling since like what, 80, like 90. So they've been and these, 80, that's a long time for a 14 yeah. or 15 year old. Right. So they've been struggling since they were like nine, like eight, yes. nine, right. Ten. Um, And then they get signed and they get dropped, which I actually think is probably the fact that they kept going is a testament to their um, work ethic, which we see now in full display with Beyonce, but also with Kelly and Latoya and Latavia, um, these young, ambitious little girls. I love this. Um, But it was a little struggle because it's like you got to hit at the right time. It's got to be the right thing. And the fact that they got Wyclef to even agree to do a remix is is a huge get. Um, a lot True. of this, I really think, has a lot to do with Matthew behind the scenes. Yeah. Matthew ain't take he ain't taking no crap. He's he's doing what he needs to do, and this is why a good manager or a rep can really make all the difference. Because yeah. yeah. you just want to create, but you need somebody making these deals, like getting Wyclef to agree to do the 
the remix and, and that, right, that right, stuff. Right. But yeah, the second album, The Writings on the Wall, and that's the one that most people will remember them from. And that came out in 1999. Again, it was a multi-platinum uh, selling record. Uh, and it features songs such as Bills, Bills, Bills. Yes. Bills, can you pay me bills? Bone bills. Uh, jumping, jumping. Ladies, leave your man at home. Say my name, say my words. name. There's someone is around it. you, baby. Yeah. I love you. Here we come. You all listen to the album more. and not us. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it was so successful uh, that it won the best R and B performance by a duo or group with vocals and the best R and B song at the 43rd annual Grammy Awards. I mean, that is correct because if you look at that album, and you like you love every song, and if you're like, I don't remember that album. Yes, you do. And you love every song. You just do. Yep. Like it's in your blood. It okay. sold more than 8 million copies worldwide. And this yeah. is when they were still selling CDs, people, because this yeah. was 1999. <laughs> I, was like, I think I had the CD. <laughs> so Beyonce is 18 years old. Damn. Didn't know that. Now, despite okay. critical and commercial success, the group was plagued by internal conflict and legal turmoil. As okay. Latavia and Latoya yeah. attempted to split from the group's manager, Matthew Knowles, Beyonce's father, citing yeah. favoritism for Beyonce and Kelly. OK, they have a point. Probably. He probably. And if you look at writings on the wall, I remember vividly like Beyonce herself had a very distinctive look that was kind of highlighted her. Like she had she started wearing the blonde uh, braids yes. and and da, 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 and like, you know, so, daddy was like, let's um, highlight some braids. It, okay. It's it's definitely some favoritism. I mean, that was obvious from us on the outside. Um, and in Matthew, I've heard him talk about this. He was like, how are you going to have two different managers in a group? But it's like, well, you also have to hear them like. Yeah. So unfortunately, and, and, and like in his vague defense, which he probably just outright did have favoritism, but he might not have even noticed. Yeah, I mean, I also feel like it's he, his he's, daughter, and he's also like she's the lead vocalist, right? So yeah. there's, but there's a, it's a little smell of like Diana Ross is, yeah, you know, you start off as the Supremes, and then Diana Ross is. Uh, obviously, it's not the same uh, relationship, but Diana Ross is right. uh, having relations allegedly with um, Gary uh, Barry Gordy. So, because of that favoritism, he starts to highlight her more. Even though they all started off as a group, Supremes was right. a group. Yeah, and then because of that, she started feeling herself and treating her the girls that she grew up with. They all grew up together, like yeah. they're her backup and it's like no, no also it's 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 all um inspired by the the uh, play and movie dream girl so look it yes! up but anyway okay. so this is what's going on and in their defense they're like 18 and like probably now as older women they're probably like maybe we should have just like gone along and maybe got on our third album and then said something because they are only doing this after the second album. And also, I don't know if the yeah. money was different. I don't know because yeah, this, who knows? this album was hugely successful. Yeah. So uh, unfortunately, um, he was not having that. So he cut Latavia and Latoya, who Damn. again, Latavia and Beyonce started together. Yeah. Yeah. Like they were together the even children. before Kelly came, like children came in. So I can only imagine how devastating that was because I bet you Latavia and Latoya never thought that they would just get cut and discarded in a sense Ugh. so quickly. Um, Probably but I think, not because they because they brought so much success and they really they really been there just from wanted the to be heard. They were kids. Yeah, because they're 18. They're all yeah. around the same age. And so yeah. they probably thought that they would just work it out. But he cut them. And I think from his point of view and Beyonce's point of view, they're like, we have momentum. Why are we dealing with this now? Was well, like because you're the one well, who's benefiting from the favoritism. Maybe, so. maybe, maybe hear, hear them out. Hear them yeah. out. So yeah. who knows what was going on behind the scenes, but I just have to bring that up. So unfortunately, in early 2000, um, Matthew replaced Latavia and Latoya with Michelle Williams yes. and Farrah Franklin. Uh, However, Franklin quit after a few months, leaving the group as a trio because, and I remember yeah. there's a, <laughs> there's like a very famous uh, interview with Michelle and Farrah there. And Farrah's doing this weird thing. Again, they're very young where she's just complaining about like, she doesn't work with the group. She, I, myself, full disclosure, I had been in a couple girl groups long time ago. And there is this thing that, 
people don't realize how hard it is to uh, create a, a, a group. They really don't know the work. A lot of people want the the success and the red carpets and all that other stuff. And even being in the studio is cute, but it's like you have to be committed. You have to be disciplined. Yeah. And Very. many 18, 19 year olds don't have that. Right. Um, and Farah, like, it's so funny because they're looking at her like she did not know how to read the room. They <laughs> cut her with a quickness. Like yeah. she, literally she was in an interview and I think they cut her like right out of the interview because they were like, she does not really realize what's going on here. Like we have to we, rehearse every day. Yes, <clears throat> you do. Yeah. And it has to be about the group. Always, always, always. Because what you're doing, you're 18, you're 19. Like it's, your head should be in the game. So um, <laughs> I have to say, total side note. My kids do like this variety show at school. It's super cute. It's mm-hmm. like I live near LA, so very well produced, but children being like twinkle, twinkle. You know, so it, it it is a wide variety of, of range. Well, when my children are a part of things, it drives them insane. And I'm let me tell you, I'm holding back. What I would like to do and what I do are very different things. <laughs> because like I understand like your children. Kids. This and should their be kids. Fun. And this should be fun. So I'm going to hold back because what I want to do is go on and Star Search with you people. <laughs> um. Well, also, you're in the business, so you understand. Yeah. Uh, but at this point, it's all hands on deck. Like, they, they're trying to get momentum. They just sold eight million fucking records. Yeah. Like, no, exactly. I, and I, I would yeah. say having been one of these girls where you get like put together with some other girls. If I came into a group that had sold 8 million records, I'm like, where you need me to be? Yes. What time? How long? Uh-huh. I will be 20 minutes early to every single thing. I will know every note, every move. Yeah. Farah, bless her heart. I hope she's doing well. I'm sure she's prospering. Like she just did not read the room because even in that interview, it's so obvious. It's like she is not picking up the cues. <laughs> so it became a trio from that yes. moment on out. Um, and I think in a lot of ways, Beyonce felt betrayed by LaToya and Latavia. I think maybe now at her age, she can understand how they felt. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, but she felt like they were kind of trying to hold them hostage and sabotage the momentum to get what they wanted. Yeah. But in, in actuality, they also probably felt like they weren't being heard. Right. Cause this is, and Matthew knows is a very, he's a very handsome man. He's tall. He's a, he's a tall, tall man. So he's a very okay. intimidating figure, I'm sure. And he's a, he's a father figure to these girls. Yeah. Who felt like basically their father was playing favorites. Let's put that out there. So, um, but it became a trio from that uh, moment on and they recorded Independent Woman Part One, which was a part of the Charlie's Angels soundtrack, um, which, and it became a uh, uh, top uh, uh, charting single. It topped the US Billboard 100 uh, chart for 11 consecutive weeks. Um, In late 2000, uh, Destiny's Child announced their plan to embark on uh, their individual side projects. So yes. it also feeds into that thing that, oh, they're just kind of trying to set Beyonce up to become a solo artist. I mean, what do you mean? Probably. So, uh, and, it, and then it, it would include that they all would release solo albums. Okay. During this time, Beyonce began to take acting roles. Uh, she made a an MTV made for TV film called Carmen, uh, semicolon, a hip hop a hip hopper hopper in 2001 alongside Makai Pfeiffer. Um, She also played Foxy Cleopatra along Mike Myers in the Austin power, Austin powers in a gold member film in 2002. She also starred opposite Cuba Gooden Jr. in The Fighting Temptations in 2003, uh, The Pink Panther uh, with Steve Martin in oh, 2006, yes. uh, Dream Girls also in 2006, along with Jennifer Hudson, Jamie Foxx, and Eddie Murphy. I love Dream Girls so much. Yes. I love it so much. Yes. Now, so now from about 2000 and those uh, those go from 2000 through 2006. But between 2000, 2003, they took a break from the group and she uh, recorded her debut solo album called Dangerously in Love. And it was released in 2003. It was a Mm -hmm. huge, massive success. Yes, it was. Um, And because of that, maybe very like, oh, I can do it on my own. Destiny's Child actually reunited to record their fourth album and final album. So it was yeah. the one album that didn't really get any traction. Writing's on the wall. 
this third album with now as a trio with Michelle. And then uh, they took a break and then they came back to do the fourth album. And it was called Destiny Fulfilled. Now, after that, the group uh, officially separated, disbanded. Uh, Now, in the meantime, side note, uh, both Kelly Rowland's solo album did extremely well, especially overseas, which which is so interesting. Only Beyonce is only recently, I think since Lemonade started doing well overseas. But they love I can tell you right now they in the UK, they love Kelly Rowland. Like, all right. Cause she did more of a dance kind of thing and she found her voice as an artist. Um, yeah. She, but she became massively successful. Um, she became probably more successful outside of the U S than Beyonce. And then Beyonce was more successful with her records in the U S solo records than Kelly, but it, it evens out in a lot of ways. Oh, Cause yeah. I know people are always keeping track, but no, don't sleep on Kelly Rowland. Kelly, Kelly Rowland is like massively successful. I don't know why people are always trying to like make her out. Like she's not successful, but anyway, and, and same thing with Michelle, Michelle, yeah. Is massively successful and she did a gospel album because she's more religious yeah. sort of minded um, but the trick is is how do you create your own sound and so in that hiatus they all went away and figured out what um, what is my sound as a solo artist right um, yeah. so but again they came back and, and finished that fourth album uh, and then after that um, Beyonce followed up with the U uh, in the US with her number one solo album B-Day so it was after Dangerously in Love, which right. came out in 2006. And then in 2007, I Am Sasha Fierce, which are yeah. oh, the uh, single ladies. Oh, the single ladies. Oh, the single ladies. Oh, the single ladies. Oh, the single ladies. Yes. None of those so. were the notes. So no one can sue us. <laughs> right. That's right. We play it safe. We could totally <laughs> sing just like Beyonce, but we're choosing not to. Okay. Y- yeah. Yeah. Y- yeah. Totally. Yeah. Absolutely. That's it. That's, it. <laughs> That's the problem. Um, now, 2008 also was the same year she married fellow musician Sean Carter, a.k.a. Jay-Z. Yes. Um, now, the following year in 2009, she starred in a film called Obsessed with Ild- Idris Elba. I don't know if you've ever oh, seen this movie. No. I don't oh even know God. about it. It is so fucking ridiculous. It is. <laughs> it's. It's one of those like funny, funny. It's ridiculous. It's fun. It's a it's a okay. enjoyable watch. It's entertaining. Right. Basically, yeah. her and Idris Elba are a married couple, and Ali. Now, what is her name? The girl from Heroes. She was in uh, Legally Ali Blonde. Larder. Yeah, yeah. She is like a secretary in his office, and she's trying to move in on. Oh my him. god! I know what movie you're talking about. And Beyonce is like, I'm not yeah. having it bitch you know it's just, yeah it's, it's a fun watch yeah um now the following year she because again she released b-day in 2006 and again between 2003 uh, 2001 and 2006 she's doing these movies and yeah. recording so there's a lot going on um but in 2000 um the following year she announced that she was going to take a hiatus from her music career uh in 2010 she announced this heeding her mother's advice quote to live life to be inspired by things again end quote yeah because yeah, basically from the time she was eight to like what 2010 so what is that she's like i don't know i can't do math so 2011 it's like would be 30 years no she's, 20 years no, Long so time. 2000, uh, 1981 to... 81? Oh, because she's when she's born. 2000, yes, she's 29. This is how so, long it takes for Lavetta and Miriam to do math. Yeah, blame yeah. Uh, American Long school time. system. American so school she's system. almost 30, because 2011, she'd right. be 30. So she's been working nonstop, like building a career da 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 like and also knowing what we know because she's more open especially in the last uh probably several a couple years because she's i mean she's an icon at this point uh she was saying that and i hadn't i didn't know that her parents had broken up I, and yeah. so they went from having like a uh, yeah. middle class maybe upper, upper middle class uh existence to having like a solid middle class bordering on working middle class like yeah existence and then she said she felt pressure to succeed because she didn't want to let her family down yeah yeah so she's working but it's also good to rest so she started uh so she took a hiatus in 2010 uh during that break she and her father also parted ways as business partners oh because it was rumored around that time allegedly that there was some money maybe going like i don't know 
da, da, da. Mm. maybe the money was not handled in the way that she wanted or she didn't know about so Ooh. they kind of separate that must have been really really hard because this is your yeah. hero and and by all accounts if it wasn't for Matthew these girls would not have no. Yeah. Succeeded. Yeah. You are they need... still like close? Yes, they are. OK. Cool. Uh, but they just parted ways. Uh, I mean, Janet Jackson did it with Joe Jackson. At some point, she's like, Dad, nah, yeah, I need to go. Yeah. Like and that's what control is about. Oh, control. Yeah. You know, so now, now during I'm that break. All grown up. OK, yes. sorry. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> now, during that break, uh, she visited multiple European cities, the Great Wall of China, the Egyptian pyramids, Australia. English music festivals and various museums and ballet performances. Um, That's great. She even wrote an article for Essence magazine called Eat, Play, Love. Um, And it talked about like her experiences. Um, It garnered a a writing award from the from the New York Association of Black Journalists. But it was just about her experiences because keep in mind, this is a girl who didn't she graduated from high school and she was like had a hit single. She didn't go to college. So she didn't have that like learning about history and putting into context. She's just living her life. So she's reading and then actually probably going to see these things. Right. You read about the pyramids, but then you see them. I was listening to um, Sarah Silverman's podcast, which Mm -hmm. is like advice. And it was the cutest. I'm total sidetracking here. Little girl was like, I'm nine years old. And my mom says, like, I want to be an actress now. Do you work with kid actors? Like, and Sarah was like, listen, your mom's probably right to like not do it right now. She's like, you want to get the experiences like as a human for you to then translate that into the arts. And if you don't have those real human experiences then how can you like and I feel like that's where Beyonce got oh wait I want to be like a person doing people things I think that's brilliant and And also I will say I came late I mean obviously I love Destiny's Child or or, you know I wasn't like uh, I I, I love their music I always love you were awake in the early 2000s yes Uh, Yes. but I always felt like her music didn't really have any deeper meaning she felt like she was on autopilot to me like I I didn't know what she was trying to say as an artist so when she released her stuff like yeah it was good I just felt like it was and what it was is that it wasn't coming from any real experiences really right yeah um and her mom was right like you and as an artist you need to always be experiencing things you can't always be in a bubble because she had been in a bubble basically uh for like 12 years uh or even more like she had been in a bubble you know and then once she becomes successful the bubble gets even smaller right right um so she but i love an ambitious woman i admire that i love it little ambitious girls and i love that they're able to uh, express their ambition but I, I just always felt like I wasn't I was in the hive I was just I liked her but I wasn't in the hive um, and you know obviously there's some songs I bought and stuff like that I think I actually did buy Dangerously in Love but it wasn't one of those albums that I could play from beginning to end she wasn't no, there I, for me yet right I liked some of the album but I mean Sasha Fierce is pretty fierce yeah okay. and but that's also because she was a married lady now she was an adult yeah. too so and then after this hiatus she took about nine months she got back to work and she got back into acting and doing music uh, and in 2011 she released four that's like her favorite number uh, okay. which I thought was a be- it's even better record uh, later that year oh, excuse me she announced her pregnancy yes on during a performance of Love on Top which is one of my favorite songs baby is you dee, 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 dee. oh my god Ooh. anyway um, at the 2011 MTV Music Awards uh, she finished the performance by unbuttoning her blazer and rubbing her stomach to confirm that her oh. pregnancy. Oh, my God. Um, the following year, their first child, Blue Ivy Carter, was born yes. on January 7, 2012. And oh. she's all of our baby. Um, yes. uh, also, people now we know that she had experienced miscarriages. Yeah. All these things before, you know, they had success um, and a healthy pregnancy uh, and birth. Now, after creating her own management company, Parkwood Entertainment, she achieved probably her first concrete bout of critical acclaim for her experimental visual self-titled album, Beyonce, in 2013. And this is when I was like, "Okay, I'm on board. Like that's the first yeah. album that she released that I could play from the beginning to end for me because it also had partition. It was dirty. It's a she a grown ass woman. It, yeah. it's kind of raunchy. It's like uh, 
uh, there's like some disco inspired stuff. It's just like fun. It's like this is a grown woman's record. Um, and she had grown just as a person, but now she's a mom and a wife. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But my favorite mm-hmm. album. Let's go. Well, it. Yeah, it's probably my favorite. It, it's, it's close with the Renaissance. But three years later in 2016, she released Lemonade. Yes, she did. And that became her most critically acclaimed work of her career. Lemonade, when it came out, it is brilliant. Yes. Fucking. I liked Untitled. I was like, oh, I like this. Lemonade came out. I was blown away. And unfortunately, I think it because it was a lot of it was about her issues with her her and her husband that they they alluded to the infidelity and all this. But I felt like it was intensely personal. I get emotional when I listen to Lemonade. Like, you know, when she's like listening to him talk to somebody uh, just just so. And then Daddy Lessons is on that. Like. I, lemonade is fucking brilliant. Do you know what's I think it's funny? flawless. <laughs> I think that lemonade, like I, you know how like the generation ahead of us, um, the problematic one, they their thing of like, where were you when JFK was shot? Uh-huh. I feel like where were you when Lemonade came out? I feel like because I've had this conversation, and I can tell you, I put my babies down for their nap. I was exhausted, and I'd heard that you could watch the video, like somehow I had access to it. And I thought it was just a video, like one, you know, four minute thing. Yeah. And the next thing I know, an hour had passed and I was like, whoa, like I remember it. It was powerful. Because it's a visual album that accompanied. And this is, Beyonce is definitely the child of Michael Jackson, Janet Jackson, Prince, Stevie Wonder. She's like a child of all of those like major influences. Yeah. Um, But she also is a child of Michael and Janet in that sense that she understood the power of the visual. But she came up in the music industry at a time where music videos were kind of like they were okay, but they weren't like what they were in like the 80s when she was still very young and like thriller came out or like or right. even um 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 uh, janet's uh uh oh god state of the world today 18 is it 1812 uh girl i don't know <laughs> uh um uh when she when she's i can watch figure this out for days missing, Go on. miss you much Miss you much. I miss you Thank much. You much. Uh, what was the I other the the, uh, the, the, the one no. where they're like all? Listen, it's like a, anyway. <laughs> like she came up in a time where like videos were like like movies. Like yes. like my favorite thing is to watch people watch Thriller for the first time because oh they God. have no idea what's coming and it's just like yep. so amazing, right? I love it. Too. No, I love it too. It's really true. I and I have kids it. who are like, Let me, "This is your education. Sit down, I children." Love it. So she, in a sense, is bringing this back with Lemonade because, of course, you know, with uh, writings on the wall, they did videos and and very fun videos like. But with Lemonade, it was because it was a visual album that accompanied the music. And I think it's fucking brilliant. And it was like her most acclaimed work of her career. Uh, The next year it was rumored uh, it was announced that she was going to headline Coachella uh, Music Festival, but she had to pull out for unknown reasons. But in a surprise post in February of 2017, she shared a photo of herself cradling her baby bump. Yeah. So she had to forego that. So later that year, on June 13th, 2017, five years after their first, she and her husband welcomed twins. Twins were the same. I had twins, too. (laughs) Yep. Sir and Rumi Carter. So not now. This is what I love about her. She Beyonce is like, yeah, most people can just retire. Like, this is great. Like, right. she's like I've done the Mm-mm. thing. I've done the damn thing. Mm-mm. She is nope. not one to let grass grow under her feet. So nope. after taking some time off, obviously, for maternity to leave, to spend time with her right. family, she got back to work. And so she also had to prepare for the following year. And she said that headlining, agreeing to headline would get her like, give her some time, but also give her a schedule because she wanted right. to get back to work. So. The following year, she actually headlined Coachella in yes, 2018. It was a historic uh, event. Um, and she began during that time uh, filming uh, footage for something that would be called Homecoming, a film yes. by Beyonce, which chronicled her uh, getting back, you know, losing the baby weight, just getting back into like performing, you know, yeah. and it was released as a film on Netflix in 2019. 
It's this- so good. And for someone who does not like porta potties and will never ever go to Coachella, it's like I got to go to Coachella, but like I didn't have to use a gross, disgusting toilet yeah. that I will not use. And I will I'll tell just you, they. A UTI. It, I think it's you. I think it's YouTube. They actually uh, played. The, the performances on like on, you could watch it on YouTube for both nights that she headlined. Oh, shit. And, I wish I knew that. <laughs> yeah. And that's how I watched it. So then when the film came uh, out, some of it looked familiar. Obviously, it's, you know, it's a film. And so it's edited a certain way. But see, so the following year on Netflix, they released a film that was from the footage of her performance at Coachella. So she, we, yes. she had like we watched it in 2018 and then 2019. We got to watch it again. But it was also accompanied by an album called homecoming the live album so good listen so let me good. tell you i was so in good. marching band and she honors the marching band so aggressively she, and she has twins and so i feel like beyonce and i are like the soul same sisters? person like, yeah y'all maybe, the same person maybe maybe yeah. you're talking to beyonce right now lavetta yeah and also mm. in this film, because she says that she never went to college, but she always loved HBCUs, historical yeah. like uh, colleges and universities. And so she would go to like homecoming for these performances because they would go all out as Miriam yes. Cattelli, she was in marching band. So they would go all out. So she wanted to play homage. And that's what a lot of the themes and yep. the imagery so is good. for. It's so good. Watch it on Netflix. It's so good. Yeah. Um, now, later, it was reported that she and beyond uh, that she had signed a contract with Netflix for 60 million dollars oh, uh, to produce uh, three different projects and one including homecoming okay. so she turned her recovery and her getting back to work into money yes she that's did. a boss move that's yes. a fucking boss move you're gonna they follow me while her. I eat this apple they you're gonna give me money her to get into shape and yep. perform a re- like so she got okay. paid double it Let me tell you, you can pay for the nutritionist, you can pay for the trainer, you can pay to like have a sleep person sing songs to you to make sure you get the rest you need. You know what I'm saying? She basically got them to pay her $20 million to get back in shape. I love it. That that, that's a boss move. Mm -hmm. Now, that same year, she voiced the character of Nala in the remake in the live action remake of The Lion King. And she released an album, The Lion King, The Gift, which she called a sonic cinema. So it's she's keeping in this themes of creating like a visual, like visually stunning uh, uh, movies uh, along with the uh, our albums, along with the 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 vocals and stuff like that. Now, I love The Gift. I don't know. I got a lot of kickback. I think the gift is brilliant. Um, it uh, has a lot of influences from R&B, pop, hip hop and Afrobeat. The songs were produced by uh, African producers, which Beyonce said was because of authenticity and heart were important to her because the film The Lion King is set in Africa. I haven't heard it. And I think oh my God, I would it's so love good. it because I love African music. It's like, um, and I will tell you, after Lemonade, I just basically buy all of Beyonce's album. Like, she's like, one of the few people I'm just like, I just buy it. I'll pre-buy it. Yep. Mm, bye. Awesome. Um, because she's going to give you a, a show. Again, she is the child of uh, Michael, Prince, Janet. Like, because yeah. she is giving you a show. A lot, uh, these other girls can't even be doing, they can't, they don't know how to do that. Like, she's giving you a show. Yeah. Now, over the pandemic, we all went into the pandemic in 2020 when yep, we, we all needed a release. Yep. Um, she released Renaissance, yes, she which did. was a queer, a black queer inspired dance album. Um, people have some people have described it came out in 22. It dropped. She just dropped it. It came when we needed it. Yes. Um, and it was it's brilliant. Uh, I think Eliminate is my favorite. And Re- but I think Eliminate and Renaissance are always fighting for one and two of my favorite Beyonce <laughs> like because they're they're so fucking brilliant um, and she, when she released it she became the first female artist uh, to have their first seven studio albums debut at number one on Billboard 200 oh wow um, again the 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 song Renaissance I was just playing it over and over and over and over. it's just brilliant like it just oh, I just love it and it's uh, but it frustrated some fans who have been used to Lemonade yeah uh, Homecoming um, the gift, like with it being accompanied by visuals or videos or like a right. movie inspired by it. But Beyonce was like, mm, she said famously uh, on her tour, you are the vision. You're the <laughs> visual baby. Uh, now it was rumored though that she was having, she had had uh, ankle surgery 
Um, oh. So around that time, that could have been the reason. But who knows? Maybe she just wants to like mix it up. Yeah. Don't want to yeah. get you like because I think this woman is brilliant um, now. But and also because at this point after Lemonade, I feel like and then like the um, homecoming and then like Renaissance, she basically was had cemented herself as one of the greats, along yes. with Michael, Janet, yes. Prince. Madonna, like one of the greats that like it would one name just she can just we, we're going to be here and you just release it when you're ready and we will buy yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> um, which brings me to um, uh, now last year. Also, uh, I'm almost finished last year in 2023. She made a brief public appearance because everybody was like, when we get individuals, when we get individuals. And it's like, well, I guess we're not getting individuals. So she she performed at a private show in Dubai and you can yeah. tell her her foot. She did kind of look like she was like kind of taking it easy from the leaked video because it's supposed to be a private event um and she performed she sounded great as always she looked great uh, and she was reportedly paid 24 million dollars to perform okay. for one night wow i mean listen i'm willing to sing songs take for the one money. night take the money man i will take that money now, um, so to keep us on our toes, because uh, she's playing with us now, a few days later on February 1st, she announced the Renaissance World Tour. Again, we awesome. have no visuals. Right. <laughs> so people are freaking out. <laughs> so people are chomping at the bit to get something. Yes. Um, and she announced dates for North America and Europe. And it broke attendance records, ticket yep. sales. Uh, it, it, it single-handedly revised uh, silver, <laughs> silver clothing, because she, yes. she had requests. <laughs> So local economies, which I think is so brilliant, local economies actually boomed because people were spending yes. money in preparation for their outfits for the tour. It's brilliant. So it's it, like, listen, and I love Taylor Swift. I do. Yes. Oh, yes. I, I, but she got maybe double the media attention that Beyonce did. And Beyonce did, I think, just as well in oh, yeah, terms yeah. of sales. Yeah. Like it was the same. They're colleagues. And, and, people, and they're colleagues and, and they and love different. each other. I exactly. just want to call that out. Okay. Women can support one another. They're different. Yes. We love both Tay Tay and Beyonce. Yes. Okay. Like we but love let's them like both. honor that like we could have talked a little bit more about Beyonce, like than we did. Yeah, I mean, this is where racism, even if what? it's unconscious. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, because they are on equal levels and stop yeah. acting like one is not. So, yeah. And they but know it. They you know. know. It. And they support each other. Although I, I was talking like. to a friend and I was like, they're friends. And she was like, are they, though? <laughs> you know what, though? Even if they're not, I love them both because they both do support women. Yes. And they know that the media is just trying to get them to fight. And it's and, and they're they not get, buying into it. They Right. And they get what the media wants them to do. And they're actively opposing it. Exactly. And I love them for it. Yes. yes. So I'm almost finished here. So now in February of this year, 2024, yes. she, along with her mom, they launched a hair care brand called Sacred with a C. That's C-E-C-R-E-D. Um, and um, on also February 11, 2024, during the Super Bowl, uh -huh. she released a, um, uh, a Verizon commercial that also coincided with the release of two of, of her uh, singles from her upcoming album yes. that was rumored to be like a country album. So when she released Renaissance, Ooh. she said it was uh, is going to be one of three, like it's going to be a trilogy of like uh, work that she was creating. So okay. uh, Renaissance was a about um, a very dance inspired and very queer as especially and and just just like I love dance, uh, just like different versions, different varieties of dance, different genres of dance, house yeah. music. But it's just lovely. And it's just queer affirming, too. So a lot of her queer fans That's felt great. seen and acknowledged, not only seen, but acknowledged directly yeah. Yeah. Um, because they're the one because the queer community is the one that um, popularized and created dance music as we know in the United States and, and right. abroad, basically. So she wanted to honor that along with Uncle Johnny. Um, and so when she released the, the commercial during the Super Bowl, she also talked about in the commercial, she's releasing music. It's like a fun little thing. You guys go and look up the video. It's really, uh, I mean, commercial is really funny. And she it. released two songs, Texas Hold'em and 16 yes. Carriages. So people are like, oh my God, I know it's a country album that's coming. Because again, she's from Houston. Her yep. daddy from Alabama, her mama from Louisiana. Okay. Yep. 
Yep. She's country, country, Like, country. what did you think? Like, yes. <laughs> so she released them. Uh, Texas Hold'em became the highest, uh, became her highest chart debut in her career. Her ninth solo number one and her 13th across all credits on the Billboard's Hot 100. On February um, 12, uh, on March 12th, so last month, she announced that the second album in the trilogy would be called Cowboy Carter, confirming yeah, yes. that it was a country, you know, maybe gospel tinge record, uh, which was released last week on March 29th. Yes, it was. And, and it includes collaborations with Tanner Adele, uh, her daughter, Rumi, Miley yes. Cyrus, Tiara Kennedy, uh, Willie Jones, Post Malone, Linda Martell. Yes, we're thinking the same thoughts again. <laughs> Willie Nelson and the Dolly Parton, among yes. others, including Raina Roberts, uh, Shabuzi, and Britney Spencer. So, Cowboy Carter, you guys got to check it out. I it's love so it. Good. I love it's, it. Like, listen to it. It's really, and I love how, like, I feel like that trip that she took uh, back in 2010 really, like, open something up in her to like really yeah. learn about stuff. And she says that, you know, she obviously she grew, she grew up and she's from Texas and Texas is very, very country. Anybody in Texas country um, is very, very big. And the, the, whether you're black, Latino, white, everybody country in Texas. Okay. It's just, she grew up going to rodeos. She like yeah. country, country stuff. So the fact that they're telling her, Oh, she's not country. Cause she's known as a pop and R and B artist. Right. I get it. But her roots are Southern and country. And she wanted to know more about it because she became she became a nerd. I think that trip turned her yeah. into a nerd. And she started seeing the origins of country and also how black people have always been there, even though like with your story with Miss Linda Martell, yes. she was kept out of it by the yep. country music establishment, booed, not supported because they want to also smudge out the contributions of black people in American music. Black people have influenced every form of Americana that you can think of. Every Point single blank. part. Yes. All the cool stuff. Um, and if it wasn't black people, it's Jewish people. Let's just be clear. I was going to okay? say, like, uh, some of our language is from Yiddish. <laughs> So every, but also because people forget like America's a melting pot. Like America's yeah. the land of the remix. Right. Like, oh my God. America's the land of the remix. It's the land of the remix people. So, uh, but that is Beyonce. That is the tip of the iceberg. And I've been listening to Car Cowboy Carter. Some of my favorites are at Levi Jeans with Post Malone. Listen, uh, yeah, I can't yeah. stop listening to the album. <laughs> it's so good. And I love the Jolene remake it's, yes, it's a cover I it's not it the same because if Beyonce had come out been like Jolene don't take my man ain't nobody gonna believe that come no. on now. ain't nobody gonna believe that she was it's like Jolene so you could catch these hands that's what she's saying that's what she's saying <laughs> um and Blackbird that, her version of Blackbird, Blackbird I mean I cry like I, why am I crying what's happening it's the first so song she I love how she opens it and ends it with yeah. American uh Requiem I I just love, love. I also love that it's sort of like country pop a little bit. And then she shouts yeah. out my girl, Patsy Cline. If y'all yes. don't know, y'all need to, y'all need to ask somebody. Uh, Miss Dolly Parton, Willie Nelson. Yes. Um, I just love it. Love so it. So I walked in when it, Willie it, Nelson it. was, he's like, is that Willie Nelson? Yep. I said, yeah. You either listen to the whole album or you walk away. I can't help you. Yeah. And you know, <laughs> like, Miss Dolly, I gotta, I gotta work. I mean, Miss Dolly Parton is a, a, we have to cover her one day, but she's a, yeah, a, um, a, a cultural icon. She's a kind, caring woman. She's everything good about the South. It's like, yes. you know, South has a lot of issues, but mm. I love the South. I'm a Southern girl. It's beautiful. There's a lot of uh, richly uh, cultural uh, richness to the South. Yes. And in, the South is also very varied people. It's not one kind of way to be no. Southern or country. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's important. Yep. So that is Beyonce. Oh my God. That wraps up another episode of, of the episode. Guys, remember to follow us on all the things. And also, please go and uh, leave us a comment and like um, and leave us a review on Apple. It helps please. people find us. It's very, very important. We really, really will appreciate it. Um, and like I always say, copy the link for the podcast and send it to your friend. Email it, please. text it. 
Don't just tell them about it. Copy the link and send it to them. Um, and you can also support us through Patreon on patreon.com slash Notorious Women. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Notorious Women. And Miriam's going to tell you how else you can support the show. So listen, you guys, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, Notorious Women Podcast. All of them. Just go to Notorious Women Podcast. Go to Instagram and follow us. We're fun over there. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we um, are. Uh, and talk to you can talk to us there you know under our you know I, I, listen it's DM. me I will talk back I have a problem um, DM us if you want to don't DM us on TikTok I don't even know if you can DM on TikTok um, you probably I can I don't know I don't, I don't know, know about so DM me on the on the Instagram or Levetta one of us will find you yeah. um, also you can email us at notoriouswmpod at gmail.com uh, please talk to us. Let us know what you think. Let us know if there's a woman we're we're missing. Some of you have done that already. I have written it down. I I it's it's in my brain <laughs> or Lavetta's brain. We don't know. Sometimes it depends who catches know. it first. I'm struggling. Send me positive vibes, y'all. And positive send, healing vibes. Go on Instagram and tell Lavetta you love her and that she's so pretty because she mm. is, and we do love her. That's mm. right. Mm. All right. Like my dog would say. Mm. Anyway, oh. on that note, <laughs> okay, we'll see you. To, we'll see you next week, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.